In the old days, reloaders would just load up powder charges in half grain increments, seat a bullet to the book specified overall length, shoot five shot groups, and just pick the best one. Then, Audet invented the ladder test and everything pretty much changed in reloading. That's when we started to learn more about barrel harmonics. From that point on, we've been desperately searching for new ways to find the best load in the shortest period of time with the least components wasted. And this has been going on for probably over 50 years now. And after the ladder test, lots of reloading shortcuts were presented to us. We had ILT tests, OCW tests, Satterley velocity tests, optimal barrel timing, rad load development, positive compensation, and many others as well. It seems like every year or two, a new theory comes out and people flock to it for a short time. Eventually, always returning back to traditional load development. Most of this load development revolves around finding what's known as a node, where the whip of the barrel is balanced in a way to optimize precision. Barrels were basically looked at like giant sine waves. Then, scientists found something out. The barrel whip that we thought affected our shots happens after the bullet leaves the barrel. You know, there is natural vibration that travels at the speed of sound while the bullet is inside the barrel, but that isn't the barrel whip that uh, we were seeing on cameras. This means that finding a load that fits the whip of the barrel might have been fiction the entire time. In fact, a bullet in the barrel with the pressurized gases behind it actually stiffens the barrel up and counteracts barrel flex. After we found this out, the guy who invented uh, optimal barrel time load development, he kind of scrambled to change his theory to something else. You know, a lot of, a lot of people did after that. And uh, basically, it's now believed that much of what we were trying to control with load development was happening after the bullet leaves the barrel. Today, most reloaders don't know what to believe, and this includes myself. Reloading has never been more confusing than it is today. So if you search through the last 20 years of internet lore, you'll notice one thing. Of the dozen or so reloading theories out there right now, Everyone thinks that their reloading method works the best. But if you apply logic to this, you have to assume that if everything works, then nothing really works. I don't know if the Hornady guys or Brian Litz are right or not, but their testing indicates that nodes really don't exist and that we're just chasing our tails with most load development processes that we use. They believe that much of what we do affects, affects point of impact, but not precision. As long as your gun likes a particular powder and bullet, they believe that a great barrel with a heavy rifle, good components, and a really precise reloading process is how you get uh, results when it comes to precision. They believe that small sample sizes are just measuring randomness and are rarely repeatable. I do believe that if your SDs and group size are based off of five shot groups, they're probably statistically meaningless. So let's get back to the original question in this video. Are your barrel harmonics off? Well, the answer is yes, no, and maybe. <laughs> Through high-speed cameras and better laboratory equipment, we're finding things out with internal and external ballistics that we never could have known before. Like I said in my 
is load development real video. We're in a period of great transition when it comes to load development theory. When you fire around in a rifle, there are shock waves that travel at the speed of sound up and down the barrel before the bullet exits. This is so small and happens so fast that it's imperceivable to the human eye, even with the most advanced cameras. But those small vibrations are occurring. These waves that occur with the bullet in the barrel can cause issues with accuracy and precision, particularly when the barrel is making contact with something like the stock, and that will disrupt those shock waves. When we seek nodes in load development, some are trying to control or time these shock waves. They're basically trying to tune things. When shooters use barrel tuners, they're attempting to control these initial shock waves to their advantage by adding weight to the barrel. But these initial shock waves have less effect on the bullet when fired through a stiff, heavy barrel, which is why heavy barrels shoot a wider variety of loads better than thin barrels do. This is also why some shooters who use custom-made heavy barrels don't think that nodes exist at all. And that brings us to an important reality. Barrel whip, as we perceive it, does not occur, occur while the bullet is inside the barrel. But vibrations do occur while the bullet is in the barrel, but they have minimal effect on accuracy when you're using a heavy barrel. Notice I said minimal effect. By this, I mean it's something that an, only a very experienced and thorough reloader will probably notice. I currently believe that if you're using a custom match grade barrel and chamber with a heavy profile on it, using precisely loaded ammunition, and you have excellent technique, shooting technique, you're probably going to shoot good groups. And the gain seen from exhaustive load development might be really small. But If you're shooting a factory rifle, all bets are off and load sensitivity will probably be an issue that you'll have to contend with. Factory barrels do not undergo the metallurgical scrutiny or attention to chamber and bore tolerances, the stress relieving, and the bore finishing processes like a custom barrel will. Eric Cortina once said that if a guy off the street were to shoot his F-Class rifle and he was forced to shoot their rifle, the guy using his rifle would probably win. <laughs> and that's a very profound comment by Mr. Cortina. And surprisingly, it's also one that I agree with. A great barrel is less sensitive to powder and bullets. It doesn't change point of impact when it heats up. And it's less affected by barrel harmonics. Barrel quality is the biggest factor when it comes to precision, in my opinion. So even though we've established that barrel harmonics does exist to some degree, and it can affect precision, everybody wants to know how much of an effect does it have when you use a good custom barrel. Honestly, I think that recoil itself is a larger detriment to precision at that point than barrel harmonics is. Most of the actual rifle movement that happens before the bullet leaves the barrel is due to primary recoil. Primary recoil occurs before the bullet exits the barrel. But once again, mass resists movement and a heavier rifle will mitigate recoil related movement better. Even with a good barrel, when most laymen think barrel harmonics is what's causing their shot-to-shot -shot inconsistencies. The real cause is usually reloading or technique-related inconsistencies. Something as simple as inconsistent neck tension can cause variances in pressure and velocity. 
and foolish shooter into thinking his barrel harmonics aren't right. Poor shooting technique can throw flyers, which is also usually blamed on barrel harmonics. While I do believe that there's ample evidence that barrel harmonics do exist, I don't believe that they affect precision to the extent that most other people do. I think most people who buy a factory rifle or don't possess adequate shooting technique have unrealistic expectations. When you see Desert Dog shoot a half or three quarter MOA 20 shot group, you expect your Tika to do the same thing. The reality is that no mass-produced production rifle is going to do that, and no factory ammunition will do that either. Even with the right rig and ammo, most people aren't capable of shooting like that. So in conclusion, even though barrel harmonics are a thing, I think it's far less detrimental to precision than other variables. I think we concentrated on it on it a little bit too much. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short and confusing video on barrel harmonics. Thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.